Couple of days of play, it's always an advantage. Now, I do see a P250 drop for Nork, and I've been really enjoying seeing the variation in TE buys in the pistols. Astralis often going for three cents of util. The Swedes like to armor up a player, and it's Nork that's been given the privilege of trying to be the spearhead into this AP. He's got a P250, practically a FAMAS in terms of the damage and active damage range it has. Practically double that of the Glock, so... Not Jewel that favors Hampus. USP certainly much more cut out for that task. And it's Cajun's responsibility to keep hold of middle. But it's a slow pistol. Oh, we are lacking some in-game audio, I believe. So hopefully we'll get that with you any Ooh. second. But we'll bring you the action nonetheless. Twister's going to find an opening onto Cadian. There's a smoke towards Connector. And now Nork. Pushing in. Sounds like we're miles away. Nico has taken the head off a twist. Oh, he's actually found two da dancing around triple box. It's not expected to see a double from that position, but we've got a 3v3, and that's the headshot sound we wanted to hear. Barab's brain splattered. Nork makes that armor P250 work, and Hampus continuing to draw them out. Nork gets a double on the jungle. Tessus has been spotted out. They know exactly where he is. It's still a very much a winnable situation, but he wants to get a quick duel here onto Hampus, and he couldn't quite find the bullets. So NIP will start off with the win. Okay, well, that was a little bit of back and forth there. As if Tessus was able to take down Hampers trying to rotate in, they may have been able to isolate a one-on-one -on -one situation. He'd already hit a previous shot before that. But Hampers, the in-game leader, we mentioned he had some struggles on the CT side of this map versus G2 just the other day. He's been able to get off to a decent start this time around with a kill. So won't be starting on that donut. As we get back underway with round number two and look at the MP9s. There are four MP9s out for Heroic right here at Eagle for Cadian. And of course, a mid push behind it. So they're very quick about this. Rez, very big test from him. They've got the AKs holding it though, and you can see how they've deterred the CT push quite comfortably. Everything's a bit shaky today. My HUD is not working. I'll get over it. We got a couple of uh, bugs in the system. I think we need to work them out. So this is what I was hoping to see. Getting that early information. I can't see a bloody mini map, so. I'll have to use that top left one. Oh, that's a really nice find from Tessus. And Plopsky, through, through his reactions, has actually taken down a teammate. Stan gets good timing, does put pressure onto Nork. Bomb spotted. This is a big frag for Tessus. He hasn't got the health. He'll be finished off. Cadian does well with the Deagle. Might be required to find a second unless Stown can make a 17 HP. AK work. And with a frag like that, perhaps he can. Twist coming from the ramp. The smoke will lock out Stown. A beautiful night glistening in the Mirage sun as he's hit the shot necessary to make a round out of this. A scavenged AK, and he's going for the silent long rotate. If he's able to make himself appear without Twist knowing his position, which makes it no longer a heads-up duel, down, the HP doesn't matter at this point. So it's going to come down to when the footsteps are heard. How far does he want to run? And now holding smart the shift play. key. Really smart play. By finding that one-bang headshot into Nork, now through his positioning alone, he gets a jewel where his health is practically redundant. Oh. Okay. Okay, Stown, you sketchy boy. You got the full on etch a sketch out for that spray. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, one to one. Great yeah. clutch from Stown. He puts Heroic back on the board early. Look at this shot. If he, has, he hasn't hit that, he doesn't get that. My goodness. Yeah, a shake of pure frustration. <laughs> and Cadian's had a haircut after uh, the I comments I made the other day. I peer pressured him into a haircut. It wasn't. It was just, it was a bit flop, floppy over his Fluffy. head. I thought that, you know, Cadian, he, he normally has it a bit more, you know, gelled on up. Or whatever hair product he decides to use. There's, there's plenty of them out there. As NIP, they're going to bounce back with a force by their own here. Ooh, armor deagles. I mean, I've seen crazy deagle action out of the majority of the NIP roster. Plopsky rares my prime candidates. And Nico's actually postured, supported by Cadian. This his crosshair placement could be the only thing separating him from an orc headshot to the dome. Yeah, that hurts. 95% of his health gone in the blink of an eye. Yeah, just using these scoped weapons, and I love how heroic kind of upgrade. So once Cadian and the boys of Heroic get a few more gun rounds on the board. Nico's dealt with Plopsky. Hampus is down there as well. Comes up for the trade, and he's going to make it work. Oh, need to stop him from... Uh... Oh, good damage again. Those top mid players, yeah, they can't help Hampus anymore. 
Armored Deagle doesn't get them far enough. And yeah, Caden's making a strong case for that org as early as he could. So you were talking about the way they, they upgrade their weapon. Yeah, so one of the keys here is Twist will go down. Is as soon as they know that the gun rounds will be coming through, one of the players can always drop an AWP over to Caden, or if he can afford one himself, he'll just buy it. And that org can go to a Tassus, go to a Nico, uh, and they can use that at range. So they're, they like to recycle their weapons. And you're getting a look at that within round number three. You can see here, Caden's gone into an MP9. They've given that org over to Nico, and now Caden might go a bit more aggressive sure. see if he can farm some extra money for an orb we i see because he's got 2650 he's got the most money give him the smg on the eco yeah so so i sure. think that they just like to, to mix things around here obviously a big part of that is to do with the reads and what they're expecting nip to do and unfortunately for katie and with that mp9 he is in the wrong place right now but that doesn't mean the kills won't come his way nico's got the org over towards window Spots them and likely throws a nade right on the pair of them. Rez gets double naded down. Oh, triple nade. Well, that seals the deal. Rez is gone. And Twist is jiggling on Delpan, hoping to catch a Tessus. He's just peeking into the off angle using that right eye advantage. He doesn't want to be peeking from the bricks. Hadian's just pushed Palace. If he's quick, he might be able to get around, but it looks like they're all going to go take him down. Uh, does manage to overwhelm him. Good control of the oh. clock and Borup. Nice adjustment in the face of adversity there. Should see the org recovered. So now, continuing to keep my eyes on the way Heroic are distributing, but it is going to be into the AKs. And a very limited util buy for the, um, the NIP boys. Unless someone bought grabs an SMG, it will probably just be like a smoke flash from the majority of them. There's the util on Nork. He's got more cash to splash, but they do have some limitations as we jump into round five. Yeah, I'm surprised Nork did not for the AWP there. You can see how much money he spent, and I thought he was saving extra cash just for that, but maybe the utility's needed. Maybe Threat wants a, a bit of a play to come out early. We can see Kadian. He's made a gap there. I think the Molotov from him is a CT molly. Not sure. He's holding the gap for the cross, though. And no one's willing to exploit it just yet. Nork is flirting with the idea. Kadian falls out. So does Nork. Trying to get across. Nico will spot him on the AUG. Bomb top mid. Hampus coming up through the underpass. And an aid likely to chip away at Nork. Down to 85 within that one shot headshot for the org. Well, there is one gap right now. And it is the B bomb site. Yeah, and Plopsky is already kind of looking. They're double boosting shot. Oh, he might have heard that, you know. Well, they've cancelled it immediately. Set up in middle. Nico holds Hampus again. Tessus peeks out. Nork loses his jewel. And it's all on to Plopsky and Rez. This one has fallen to pieces for the ninjas. And Plopsky still yet to frag after taking down his teammate in that chaos on eight. Still minus one boasted on the fragging charts. And Stan's holding a, line, a lovely angle just to tap away and hand out a haircut. Oh. Plopsky's the one to do so, though. He's got his trimmers in his hand. And maybe Borup's next in line. Ooh, okay, access to B and a bomb plant. These boys are starting to shape up a 2v5. Another kill comes in. Plopsky's got not only two, but the sight. Dropping the smoke. The Swedes digging their heels in. They've taken a lot of info with that smoke, though. You can see Short now can advance. Borup's pushing in. Tessus pushing on the apps, and Plopsky keeps fragging. He's popping off. Plopsky, Rez with a Nico frag, and now all onto Tessus, a 2v5. Just getting ripped out of the hands of to the Danes. That's big. Three to two. Wow, you don't normally see Stown get beaten in that fashion. And that was the key to the round. Bomb site control was given up. And from there, Plopsky did a fantastic job of just isolating some jewels. Stown, it, it felt like, you know, he had the advantage there. But Plopsky taking his time, not making any sound cues, getting the. Surprise frag, and yeah, huge round right there from NIP. 2v5! That's wild to see, and a very frustrating one to lose in the early stages for Heroic, but they can buy again double orbs down immediately onto that. Hello, Hampus, and Kadian gets tagged up. That pressure is very scary. He's going to try and get the hell out of Dodge. Res can't oh, punish, and Kadian, run. you're playing with fire. He's actually escaped and taken such a huge gamble, and it not paying off. Stown's orb does fill the feed, though. Holding out, we're not going to be seeing Plopsky with similar impact into the next round of play. Six will lose the early first blood for NIP. And already, look at that Borup positioning. He's pushed up ramp. Good catch from our observer team. They've basically completely denied half of the map. He did this last round as well. He actually went through apps and got the opening kill. So just aggression from Borup on the SMGs. And now Hampers, he needs to find a trade and will do exactly that. It's down. Again, getting caught sleeping. 
They're going to find themselves in a four on four with the HP and utility advantage. NIP, they could steal another one back. Feels like it, doesn't it? These they, They're really undaunted by these early man disadvantages. They've come up short now. Three of them walking up. Tassus is going to be checked. And he manages to get himself one. Keeps the numbers level. Don't forget, Cadian was brought down very low by Hampus the early stages. He does need to force them off this cross. That's the bomb coming from short, so he's right to gamble that way. That's the bomb getting across. He knows there could be one tucked in close. Borup up short with a smoke grenade. He's actually using... He's going all the way around the world. I misread that. An MP9 versus a Hampus AK. I don't fancy his chances. He's gone down. They might even have to think about the save. Yeah, they will. Wow, another round where Heroic worked hard to find an opening. And then as soon as Stalin gets taken down, the round falls and Rez wants even more. He was chasing, he was hunting, but that AWP is going to hold him back. Kadian will get away. He's gotten out of dodge in three separate occasions so far in just this round alone. And Hampus is locking this in. He might be able to take Nico out of the equation right now, pushing up Cap back turn towards top middle when Hampus gets him, pants down. And we saw similar things from Hampus on train against G2, yeah, coming right. in with late flanks, stealing away guns that they wanted to save. So the impact that's going to have is massive. It's only the 1900 loss bonus going into the heroic bank balance for round number seven. And they will have this hero saved AWP for Kadian to work with. But that means he needs to find impact. And with how good NIP have been using this utility towards middle, the smoke's on towards back of connector, towards window. It was practically Flash flawless, just trading up short, walking into B. Again, seems to be the, uh, the avenue to success at the moment for the Ninjas, finding those opening picks in middle. They just had three members parked up in mid. They got some great util into this one. Ten flashbangs up against nothing other than that saved orb. So the plan is stack B and hope NIP just go all in, but they're sending Plopsky in as a scout. They flash himself it. out. Rez is on his way. And there's the first frag. They found the AWP, but they're committing. No way. NIP, you're walking into the lion's den here. USPs, they just have to start peppering. There's so many of them, and they're getting frags. Oh, no. Disaster strikes. It's Yikes. only Nork. Borob recovers an AK, gets the frag as well. Nork working and operating with only 45 HP. It could very well fall out of the heroic hands, but this eco victory, the stack on B has worked. And now Nork, he'll have to make a sound cube, but he finds Nico. And now the bomb's within his grasp. Borup doesn't have the armor for the one-on-one -on -one duel. He wants to catch him off guard. Process of elimination for Nork. Doesn't have the bomb. It isn't too far away. We have to pick that up. No issues. Borup refusing to give him anything on this hunt. If he walks around wide, though. 45 seconds for these two to play this game of chess, this game of cat and mouse. There he is. Borup holds the line, walks in, and that's a full eco victory. Oh. He doesn't save the hawk. Borup trying to look fancy. Oh, oh dear. Well, I mean, you can't. It, it sours the mood, but it is still an eco victory. We'll see how that starts. Acadian flash pulls the trigger. <laughs> the rest was Nico. He gets one with the dinks, and then another USP frag brought in. Yeah. Wow. I cannot believe they stole that away. And you were bang on. The fact that Plopsky finds the AWP as the opening kill, the opening sound effect of the entire round, and then they continue running into okay, his maybe domain. Maybe they stacked A with solo or P. Yeah, I mean, that's you don't know. probably the logic there. But you, you normally get scared of the big gun. And uh, they weren't scared whatsoever. Maybe they should have been because NIP now, just, they, uh, they're not Just broken. after NIP had their ridiculous round and Heroic have responded with one in kind. The pacing of this game... And it's only seven rounds in, has been very peculiar. And you can see what it's done to the ninjas now. They have to overcome some adversity of their own. A Deagle, Mac 10. And again, you can see the ninjas are ready and willing to just not hold that A push. They're convinced that there's enough respect there from Heroic. And the window smoked. And three crossing over. Typical mid control. Don't forget Stan was having his issues on B. They want to just pressure it again. It seems that that is the strat. If it ain't broke, don't try and fix it. It's a 3 2 split of the CTs. They will be pushing into a numbers advantage, especially with Cadian so passive. Look at the angle Stown's going for. It's, it's perfect if Cadian was holding his apps. That he's not currently. He has. Surely to react upon the call of Stown. Oh, a wide swing in SMG, and there's so many spotted. Cadian, what can you do? They're not going to give it to him. He's desperately hoping this flash is jumping across. They know where he is now. And just like that, NIP punishing Heroic for their setups on B. I have to save here. There's no way back into this. 
you don't even know exactly what weaponry you're up against. It was just one kill from Nork and the site's cracked open. Stown is being punished, and that's such an unusual thing to be saying here. What a weird in, sentence. Yeah, in three of the gun rounds the NIP have posted on the board so far in this game, it's been through the deaths of Stown. They had that round, the first gun round where they found all those openings, and then Stown was sitting towards the van. Plopsky walks out, and in part of a 2v5, just kills Stown before he can make a shot. In the following round, Stown brings out the double orb. They get the opening pick over towards B onto Plopsky, and then he gets caught with his pants down on Cat. Hampus jumps up on the bench and beheads him. And this time... Is Rush observing today? I do believe so. I hope he came into Rush, work. Rush, you're, you're a bit of a movement god. Can you do the um, white van B-apps jump? The white van B-apps jump? Are you talking about how you kind of like surf up it? You like jump on the, the back of the van and then you can kind of self-boost fast in the off like the, before they can even see you. I yeah. don't know about off that. that. I know you, you ever tried? There's a weird way. Yeah, you can like kind of boink up here. And then you jump onto that thing and... Ooh. Oh, what time is it, Alex? It's 4.17. Oh, okay. That's nice. My watch is three seconds, three minutes fast. And an hour fast as well. <laughs> oh, so. yeah, that's true. I still haven't changed it for uh, whatever it's called. Daylight savings. The last time, though, isn't it? Uh, apparently. They keep talking about that. Who knows? I think we, we're, we're boycotting daylight savings. Cadian's getting a lot of pressure. Look how deep his own smoke is. That might even save his life. Cadian and survival. Oh, Stouty boy. No, no, no. You do not get long range from bench to the MAC-10. That's not your death this time. And they're into B again. NIP, finally, something goes the way of Heroic on this defense. The bomb hasn't been planted yet. It is loose thanks to the frag of Cadian crossing Plopsky. Bomb was loose and they can't really contest it. That has to be scooped up by someone. Nico, oh, oh he needs that jewel. Hampus has got it. Apps finding the frag now. They re-smoke for the bomb retrieval. Rez surely going to put some speculative shots into that smoke. Tess is so low, but he still gets the frag. That changes everything. nork has gone too. A successful retake of the B site. And I say retake, of course, with bated breath. The bomb didn't go down, but it was knocked out of the hands of Plopsky prior to their arrival. Just Hampus now. They are low. Maybe Cadian won't get the frag so easy. They're stacked up, though. When you peek this corner, you're not ready for both of them. Tessus makes his 13 HP last, getting a double with it. That one got dicey again, but it's a very, very clear indication of where... Oh. That's the lip. Thank oh. you, you nerds. Wow. I didn't know that's what I'm aiming for. Is that MC Rush? Of course it is. You All know right. it is. Well, we missed his birthday the other day, so happy I, birthday I, I, to I was MC. aiming at completely the wrong part. Okay, that's interesting as hell. Thank you. And you know who, who else's birthday we missed? Yesterday was SEO's. So within two days, one oh, day was crap. MC's, and the next day was SEO's. So oh. we'll wish them happy birthday today. Yeah, I think we should. A very happy birthday. Congratulations on being born this time X amount of years ago. It's difficult being born, I've heard. Yeah, it's a lot of hard work. You have to celebrate it. Hampus has gone down, Nico. Taking him out of the equation, but a four on four and a fast A take. This is a different flavor from NIP. And it's caught Cadian completely off guard. Rez again onto Nico. Borup, how has he not been finished off? Controlling his spray to damage Nork, but it's all onto Tessus already. A complete change up and it's worked. He has to think better of this again. So this is fantastic from NIP. If we talk about pace changes, if we talk about a yeah. clear indication to bully a weakness that they've identified within their scouting of today's matchup, they've done that. They put so much pressure on the B bomb site, and then as soon as you get heroic thinking, oh, they're just going to go for that standard B split again through middle where they found so much success, they changed the place, uh, the pace and the place. And the place. To the A bomb site. <laughs> so we didn't think that uh, the letters were going to be a problem today after the opening segment, but apparently they still are, as Heroica left guessing. What will next round hold? And for them, with the loss bonus ticking on through, they have just enough to warrant a buy. You can see here that Stown and Cadian have just over that 4K mark. Borup and Nico operating more within the middle of the 3K pack. And taking a timeout, probably a good time to talk through your options because we do already have 10 rounds played. And you can see how quick this is. Out apartments, a minute 30, the kills are already coming down. Stown taking control of Connect. Uh, sorry, Bor Nork is taking control. 1 minute 28 when he's getting that frag, by the way. That's uh. He's already on their side of stairs. Very quick take from NIP, and it's a stark contrast to what they've been throwing at the Mumbi. But that's the beauty of it. That's a, that's a good in-game leader and coach right there. Hampus, of course, joining the roster to uh, upgrade from Lechrome, both fragging capacity whilst also maintaining more of an, act, an actual leadership. I mean, he, he was an in-game leader uh, as a role, as opposed yeah. to being someone thrust into it. We've had a lot of players in recent times pick up in-game leading because nobody else wants to do it, but I think it's always better if you can. Now, it's not always possible to have somebody that has a natural inclination to wanting to yes. be a leader. Because like right? then you can't keep their mouth shut when they're playing CS. Precisely. Like Chad Virgil. Yeah, I try.
I haven't worked out where the mute button is just yet. <laughs> well, we'll get in there. Nade looks promising. Not really. I lied. A little bit of sand in Hampus' uh, eye, but he'll move on. I had a kid throw sand in my face one time. It's horrible. I once put a stick in someone's spokes of his bike. Oh. To do, dismount him. Did it work? Yeah. Oh. Is he safe? Well, he was being mean to me. So okay. I hope not. I hope he's unsafe, Chad. I hope he's taking risks daily and they're not paying off. <laughs> Living on the edge. <laughs> The interesting thing here is Heroic, even throughout getting bullied so far, can we just use a cam on Cadian? He's the only player holding B right now, Rush, over towards that balcony position, and this is all he has, a pea shooter, just an MP9. So pound for pound, the best gun in the game. Bit of a gamble, you'd call it. Yeah, and they're going for this again. So you'd think after being bullied, they would maybe start calling a bit more of a traditional 2-1-2 setup, but stuck in their ways are Heroic, and it's a good call because NIP look like they want to head over towards A. You can see two players towards the ramp, one already pushed up middle. Utility now being thrown out for Hampus as he leads from the front, just feigning a bit of mid control. And now they park themselves in connective, ready to split onto the A bomb site. Yeah, Nico has been commanded to stay mid window. Tessus. As that smoke blooms, he's going to get the double swing, and they're coming at ramp as well. He's got a lot of pressure. Can Nico contribute in any way, any capacity? Hampus is the first duel. Tessus wins it out very swiftly, traded into the sights. Down, trigger discipline. They don't double check it. He has to multi kill and he gets them both. Nork trying to finish the job, but he's going to get hunted by Borup. No, he's not. Through the smoke's bloom, he hits the shot. Now a 1v1. Caden was the B player. Nork's getting the bomb down uncontested. And he slipped past. That's the jump from Nork to ensure Cadian doesn't have the element of surprise now. Swinging in, right eye, jumping, doesn't stop him. Nork saves Nip. Oh, I loved it from Stown. The trigger discipline. He just wasn't anticipating a third test. As you could see his wide stance, hoping they just assume it was clear. I like the idea. NIP too strong. Yeah, and you can see here, as soon as Stown gets that double kill, he actually pulled out a nade to try and keep himself safe. And this is it, the P250 in the face. The follow-up onto Borup, who's going to be kicking himself that he didn't convert off the hard work of Stown. And then Kadian, who he's left in a very, very difficult one-on-one, -on -one, Orp versus MP9. The mobility nice favored Kadian, but yeah, and that's another clutch. We have seen so many Nork clutches over the last few days. Oh, it's very courteous of Heroic to get this one over quickly. They've charged towards the windows, and I mean, admittedly, it's kind of working in their favor, right? You're not dying to Plopsky's Mac 10. It's something. It's a consolation prize. It's not a great one. I say that as Borob does give an extra 600, but it's minimal damage additional. So round 12, NIP have got themselves a solid seven on this T side, and they ain't done yet. A couple more rounds of play of the first half here. And I think, you know, if you look at Plopsky, the fact that he only has three kills so far and one of them came against an eco just then, you have to remember two of the frags he did make, two of which were over towards that B bomb site in a two on five. So when we're talking about impact and we're talking about impact frags, Plopsky has had some of those. Even though he's down the bottom of the scoreboard for the entire server, his impact's been felt as far as the overall seven to five currently sits. Heroic on the five and IP on the seven is up middle. Hmm. There we go. Deep nade from Tessus. Yeah, but it does mean that A is a little unprotected. So it's B. Completely. Oh, and I didn't even see Hampus. He's already in. Good grief, Heroic. You're about to see a full cancel from the nin nin ninjas in pajamas side. That's what they're called. Couldn't decide. But Tessus is going to work this out, but is he anticipating someone with so much control? I, uh, look at the angle Hampus has gone for here. Unless Tessus is... Going around the world. He's not going to clear it. He's about to get pantsed. No, he's not. No way. Hi. We've got B. Perfect entry frag. Hampus. He is a bit of a weasel, isn't he, with his positioning? He likes to take space. This is a this is a product of not only a, an in-game leader that's done his research, but one that wants to kind of punish the gaps when he sees them. Yeah, he's taking a lot of risks that are paying off. So that's when you're really feeling it as an in-game leader because a lot of the times these are more like guesstimations. So you've done your homework, you've done your research, you're making a bit of a bet with information, but you still have to take a risk. Like how, how often are you going to expect the B-bomb side to be completely open on a gun round? Of course, Heroic have shown a clear indication for leaving one man over towards the B site, but to leave nobody? That worked out very, very well. And then to have the balls, instead of looking for more kills and trying to take back more space, just hiding in plain sight while his teammates rotate over, he's picked them up the eighth round with a single kill. So Hampus doing work here today. And NIP looking very, very threatening within the first half. Heroic 
only five to the good and there's two more rounds of play as you can see here a minute and seven seconds on the clock so it's not like that was even late round so this has been full they just got in there early and really really punished so yeah. at this point Heroic is still able to purchase. There's a Famous in Tessus's hands, three M4s and the AWP for Cadian because they all saved after that death. But they Hunt need to get some rounds going. Oh, man. They're going to have to respect it now. Yeah, you'll see the split much more default from Heroic. And Smoke does stop Cadian holding the cross of Nork. Default spread. There's always a chance that a window boost could be made in a round like this. And you can see that Heroic, once again, they kind of hedge a little bit. Like, okay, well, we're going to assume that nobody can take that space and go, go for that boost. Because if they wanted to be certain, they'd need to keep eyes on window. And as I say that, Cadian has to clear back. He has to be prepared for this. Another smoke from the CTs towards Connector and the mid control from NIP. It's staggered. It's late. The pacing of their rounds hasn't really been a problem. Cadian's going to pick this. Good money. Keeps him at bay again, and he's got a nade if they are cowering from the flame. He wants to get it deep. And he does. Perfect. Lovely damage. Oh. Over 100 inflicted. There was a follow-up there as well, but it didn't look like it did a huge chunk. Oh, still up has gone down. What a catch. That's Twist. He's been sitting in Palace this whole round. Now he reveals himself. He chose the timing perfectly, and that's the pick NIP were hoping to find. They're actually well, all grouping up onto B. Twist keeping them distracted. Tessis is backing up. Sound pushed up in the apps. At least they'll focus on this short push from one angle of assault, but... Ooh, Tessus. It's a FAMAS, and it's double trouble. NIP low. Great crossfire, albeit a little avant-garde. 15 seconds of fake from Norky needs to close. Could kill, and Nico's pushed him in and the off. Didn't see it coming. And Twist, though he did pull a rotate, though he did set his team up for success, the opening kill has not been translated into a round. Heroic closing the gap. Six. NIP's eight. Yeah, that was the second nade. So it landed just in that little cubby just there. Cadian's was great. I think that was Nico's from Connector that was a little bit shy. That could have been a double kill. And around that, wow, it, uh, Dicey after this initial frag was mopped up very, very easily. You saw Tessus when he jumped out the window. He could have just stayed exactly where he was, but by getting closer and closer to that far right-hand corner was forcing them further into Stown's line of sight. And that worked picture perfect as Heroic are looking for seven here. NIP have won the half. Dorping now, and they might go back to something. Okay, so Hampus is trying to make it look like it's the same fast mid, and he is very fast. Oh, Horup goes for info, gets more than he bargained for. Two members of Heroic, but this pressure from NIP, it's everywhere. And Hampus continue to be a threat. He actually wants to threaten the window position. He does cancel, re-smoking on connector. He is the only man in middle. He's trying to make it look as intimidating and as daunting as possible, and it's worked. Look at Tessa's tucked in on ladder room. Cadian staring at the window boost. 70 seconds, Twist contact into A. He's managed to get all the way up to Tetris without a dead. single whisper. He's not dead yet, Chad. Nade might finish him off if they were to throw it. Finds one, does swing into Plopski, but the CT frags are there. It's still a brown disadvantage. Now Hampus fills the feed with one of his own and Cadian catching Rez's swing. This is a double up retake. It does not favor them. Stopping that bomb plant is half of the oh. battle and peeking on his own flash, Cadian has converted. Ampus. A fake. And not a frag. Stown's the one to connect it. They succeed. In-game leader with three on an important round. Puts it 8-7 on the half. Competitive series continues in just a moment.
making mistakes. Very close half between Heroic and NIP. One representing the red and white, the other the blue and the yellow. We have got a Scandinavian showdown, Nordic showdown. I always get it wrong. One of them doesn't get included in one of them. But I didn't pass geography, Chad, did you? Uh, we didn't even have geography in Australia. They just go, you're in Australia. It's far away from everything. We, Kangaroos. We learn about three things. Yeah. Uh, one of them is Gallipoli. Ah, uh, Gallipoli. The other one is uh, that apparently the UK is up. Up, yes. And uh, so Santa Claus. And that's pretty much where the uh, Australian educational system stops. Now, into our Counter-Strike, I've already seen Hampus... Ah, he's getting a lot more pressure than he anticipated off that boost, but he still hits his shots. Plopsky's there in support. And just get out-aimed. Heroic have got themselves a lot to overcome. Oh, good grief, it doesn't get cleaner than that. Holy moly, okay. Well, <sighs> this one here from NIP, they're kicking it second half off in style. Nork, I mean, I swear, when we had that first series, he was top of the charts in two of the three maps they played to get them to this upper bracket. And you can see every member of NIP, we're fast going to have to include them in the uh, the same comparison we use for Heroic, you know, five yeah. strong individuals. And I, I think it's hard to disagree, especially when Nork has showed up with such a high level of form after his uh, short break from the game. They can all definitely have their moments. And I think Heroic now are operating on the back foot. I think they've been operating on the back foot for the majority of this match having to chase their tails with all that B pressure they received. Full AX sec. And then we even had that Nork clutch. So let's see how much more Nork can do. Feels like a full AX sec. Keep your eyes on Hampus. He's actually playing sleeper here. See what you're saying. Completely smoked off and Tessus, he doesn't check it. Cleared it. Doesn't check it and enables a free frank for Hampus. Cadian as well goes down. They're finally gonna address it, but the damage is done and this force buy is over. Nor gets back-to-back -back triple kills, just going and padding the stats against the Kevlar by. Oh dear, let's see how those frags were found. So Hampus got the double, everyone's looking at him, and then as all attention is drawn towards Hampus, Nork shows up and knocks all of those hunters on their ass. Yeah, so I think the spam through the smoke there thinks heroic, or makes heroic think even that it's just going to be a full retake setup. But Hampus, that's a massive risk to take on an anti-eco round. And we know it was a force buy with upgraded pistols, but if he dies and gives an M4 up in the remit of the T's in the bomb site, well, that becomes a real big problem. Not to be the case, found a lot of impact and well, up towards a ramp they go again, this time with just Glocks, P250 and Flashes. Okay, that actually works. Hampus is just peppering. Oh, okay. They're just taking it in turns for their triples. He just uses that Tech 9 like a G3. 
Remember G3? You ever played uh, a game with a G3, Chad? What's a G3? It's just a weapon you tapped on in COD 4. Oh, okay. You know, I, I thought like... it was like, like a G6. Like oh, a G6. it could have been. Maybe that's the, like the refined version. What song was that from? Uh -huh. It was like five or six years ago now. Yeah, like Probably a, more. A radio poppy. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. A G6. It was definitely back when I was in the truck driving to work. It wasn't. It was pre. When I was in the station wagon parking at the hotel. Yeah, digging holes. Yeah, there's, there's, there's different times in people's lives, and that's when that song was playing. <laughs> Okay, well, Nork has the AWP now. They've kept MP9s for Res and Twist. Popsky on that org. We said we'd see it. Yeah, and there's a three-man advance up through underpass. Res is likely going to jump for info at some point, but doesn't have any util to dump on them. It would only be his MP9 bullets. You see Nork's been caught out. Storm. Storm? Storm. <laughs> Takes him Storming down. Warming up connector. Yeah, thank you. Oh dear, Hampus. That nade could do something. Looks promising. Hello. Oof. Finishes off the job. Hampus, another double kill. And now pushing in his res off the back of the flash. Doesn't finish the job. He nearly took down Stown. But he lives to tell the tale. Twist rotating in nicely. Could oh, have the flank here. Ready for this. Yeah, it's very fast. Unannounced as well. Cadian's pivoting to B. But Stown's going to go down. Plopski likely going to just knife out as soon as this frag comes in when there's no one else home. If Twist makes the kill, Kadian doesn't get a move on. If it was Plopsky, though, there you go. So now Kadian should know it's open. He can run, and with the two-on-one, he has all the information advantage. They're still looking for him. Not quite certain where Kadian's gotten off to right now, and he's going to plant for Cat. Still no rotation over towards him, as Twist now will understand where the bomb's being planted. And he is close. Okay. Okay, does that mean he has to stay there? Oh, no. Okay. Well, he wanted apps, and now he's about to get mollied. Oh, double molly. He's just going to burn. 30. Oh, it's over. Kadian, a slip up of his own, his own design, forced his decision, forced him to stick around, and he gets double mollied out of the van position. Brutality. Putting another round, an important round, on the board for NIP. They recover the AWP as well, thanks to Twist's fragging onto Stown. That was very, very rough for Kadian. I, I think frustration probably won't do that justice for him whatsoever. If he was able to get up through the van and maybe into the outs position, could have isolated some jewels, but by flubbing the jump, look at this. Just punished. What? He's going to melt so quick. There's, there was not anything he could do. No. Even if he tried to push from the van out through the Molotovs, he would have been leaving there dead or on red HP. You're not going to find two, off. two jewels, are you? That's insane. And uh, the smiles on the faces of NIP, I think they tell you exactly how this game is going. AK's come back out. The plant was good. But Heroic needs to start putting some rounds on the border. NIP are going to take us to map number two very quickly. And speaking of quick, they've taken a lot of space over towards apartments. They justified this pick pretty quick, didn't they, Chad? Yeah, it felt like it was a, a curious one considering what we saw against G2. But now they're showing that it is definitely a map that they've done their homework on. Hampus and his pushes. Oh, he's so naughty. Like, wh when he takes the risks and it doesn't work, it looks silly, but every risk he's taken so far in this game has paid off. That's true. Yeah, that's the difference. We've seen what it looks like when it doesn't work. You get seven for 20. But, oh. Oh, oh, oh. He's almost going to be over the lip of T-Spawn. Nico needs to turn around. Three, two, one, and he's gone. He's disappeared. Okay, There well, is Kadian. a bug in the system. Oh, no. Nico's going to be... And don't forget how Kadian died the round prior. Oh. Well, Nico's got his nades out. Hampus controls the spray. He spots another. Oh, Kadian's in trouble. He's mad as hell. Tessus is joining him. He's getting info. Hampus drops anything he can to do more damage. He no actually way. gets another kill. Oh, Kadian's going to be piping hot mad. Oh, four versus two as the dust settles, but... <sighs> You can see how small the margin for error was there. Nico coming back just at the wrong time, not turning around, even made footsteps, and Hampus still converts two massive frags, and now NIP are looking good for 13, unless they drop the ball in a huge way here. Up towards That's another round-winning play from Hampus. Yeah. He says, as they find the frag on to B. Not going to hit the cross either. Need to get a molly on that plant spot. Not going to be easy for Nork to get it down now. Oh, he's taken Stown down, though. Molly exchange, Tessus. Forced off the site, does get a glimpse of Plopsky, does evade the flame as well, oh, but over. yeah, he's got eight seconds. He'd have to be planting now, and pff, okay, he's gone. Good catch. It's Nork eventually finding his second on the AWP of round 20, and now NIP are within touching distance. Another round won by the leaders' proactive pushes. I'm glad to see it today. I was hoping we'd get to see some CT signs taking that info away, and look what he did more than that. The fact he's even naded them, pushed them with the USP after running out of bullets, Getting all that info, yeah, they deserve that round. And Hampus is the one to uh, 
to start making it a little bit awkward for Rogue. This isn't playing out by their game. They're not getting to play their game. Yeah, they're being dictated too for once. So again, it's going to be a faster pace round from Heroic over towards B. Molly dropped, lots of damage done. Oh, yeah, and they're dropping out after being needed into flame Three and the bullets. Yeah. And they've got everything they need. He tries the spray transfer. Plopsky's done well to get two. They've managed to get a plant and even a little boost. Caden getting himself up on the... Oh, the jumps aren't working for Katie and he oh. needs to check his binds because that is two massive boo-boos on the movement that have cost him his life. And Bora burning now. It's a MAC-10. He's dead. That's 14. NIP will defuse the bomb and they are looking great. Yeah, less boo-boos on NIP's side. To give you my hard-hitting analysis, <laughs> I think NIP have committed less boo-boos. Oh, no. Three Katie. standing there. like So Plopsky and Twist went down and they've all had their moments, but you can see Nork and Hampus are head and shoulders above anyone else in the server right now. Everyone else is around this 13, you know, pushing towards the teens. Anyone else other than Nork and Hampus, but 24 and 22 respectively for them. Good game here, isn't it? It is. And I, I wouldn't be surprised to see Train be another banger, if not a closer one. This is Heroic's pick and NIP no slouches on it himself. Well, Heroic haven't gotten going on this T side. It's true. I mean, to get around. It's about time. It's been six consecutive off the break of the second half, and it started poorly again. Tess, this is mid lurk. Gone. Hampus, another headshot. Borup cut down to size. Nork holding the palace push. Plopsky's rotated in. Rez from jungle. And that smoke makes it a whole lot harder to hold that jungle position. Plopsky's dropped it defensively. Aiden might have been spotted there. Has to take a fight. Yeah, twist my molly. Oh, Nork's actually hit the headshot by the collateral. Kadian digs him out of trouble temporarily. Now a one-on-one -on -one emerges, and Plopsky reveals not only his awareness of Stown, but Stown can knock him down. Big shots, triple kill from the young gun. Keeps Heroic and in it with a chance to win it. And it's close at that stage, but it's the only round that Heroic have picked up so far. And the issues here lie that NIP have been taking a lot of risks. They've been going for a lot of pushes, and there's no reason for them to back down from that style of play. So here, they get a little bit unlucky. Yeah, Kadian gets a collateral. He gets a double kill with the AWP. How many rounds is he going to be able to pull that one out of his ass? Probably not many. So an NIP can continue doing what they have been. They're only two rounds away from securing this one. And then being able to get the guns back out. Four M4s, AWP, buys looking relatively similar. It's just Bow up operating on a Mac 10 and early damage, well, no damage, early utility and presence has been expended over towards a ramp. This one slows down a little bit. You can see a bit of a default setup without too much mid presence right now. Rush towards the ramp, Kadian picks again. No aggression so what far. What is for the uh, Hampus Plopsky? Is one up, one down? Just one, yeah, okay, so they're actually double dug down there for now, but they were playing on the different elevations. 75 seconds on the clock. There is no rush for them as the bomb's still floating in T-spawn and they're looking to pull any CT utility they can out without too much of a cost. You can see that costs them nothing. See how fanned out they are though right now on the T-side. They want to try and stop Hampus from slipping a gap. So now they have presence towards Palace, a ramp, they had B-apps, and they also had middle very passively held. And now it looks like they're retooling for an A split and that would be dire. There are four players right now from NIP over towards the A bomb site. It's just one man in twist over towards B. CT smoke arrives. Bob's gonna try and push on that and he does actually get Hampus. Nort couldn't quite find the shot necessary. Just whistles past the ear of the Swedes. Down frags as well. This A hit's working, but will they expect Plopsky? Borup doesn't. We've seen the trigger discipline. We've seen how powerful it can be, but at what cost? Borup's got a kill. flag. Yeah, okay, but wait. Wait. Plopsky has a chance, and he unloads his mag. The spray, he gets him down to one, a mess. On a one. doubles up. He knows where he is. He's missed his shot onto Stown, the movement. Enough to evade the orb shot. Now he's retrieved the bomb. The pre-fire's not there either. He's holding it. Can't deny it. Nork doesn't want to call the bluff. Stown's got it down. And now, crossed away as oh. well. Nork, a couple of misses here. He needs his frag. He's on for the triple. Stown gets it. And Heroic saved twice. Two triple kills back to back from Stown. He comes alive when they need him. He was bullied so badly within that first half over towards the B bomb site. We see his moves. Like, I swear he was doing a proper erratic wiggle to evade that Nork. It's almost like he was waiting for the re-pick, you yeah. know, with that, because he wasn't beelining for the bomb. He was expecting that fight to come out. So the fact that Stown stays alive and then converts another, insane scenes. Absolutely nuts here. He saves, well, doesn't save uh, Tessus there, but saves the round. Oh. as well. Plopsky. Somehow staying alive. He's, yeah, he's going to be a bit salty after this one. 
And Stound is holding his nerve on that line, gets the fight eventually. Yeesh, okay. NIP tested now. I'm almost grateful that they Oof. are. Yeah, we might get a bit of a game of this one at this juncture because I think it should be a save from NIP, but they might want to invest knowing how low the cash situation is over there for Heroic. Only one man standing means that the reinvestment won't look great. You can see the scores on your doors here. Two rounds on the trot now for Heroic after conceding the first six of the second half. And Stown after that shaky first half is now leading the chance. 17 kills, 89 ADR. And they're going to need more of that as they continue this comeback. Heroic, one more for the double digits is the scoreline now 14 to 9. And Hampus is actually purchased in with a Hero M4, Alex. So I don't know what you make of that one. I like it. Hampus has already proven that he's uh, on today. It's amazing how they went to A. No one came A. And now they're rotating. So check out all the grenades that they currently have. Four. One on Hampus. One on Plopsky. One on Rez. And one for Nork. Twist hasn't invested in anything. So this is where Heroic just have to make sure that they're, they're leaving no loose ends. This is a round that's destined to be the 10th for our representatives of Denmark. Imagine getting coordinated. Wouldn't you just be real sad? Yeah. Especially late round coordinated. Well, now they're going to be triple nated because one of them has been expended from Nork. Don't do it, Rez. Don't do it. They're coming up short. He's changing through the ways he wants to throw Ooh, the name. He's going to get the info. Okay, so three spotted, I think. And <laughs> they will have a chance to unleash hell with those grenades, but... At what cost? Oh, it even hits the pole. It's just not destined to be. Perfect from Heroic. They've handled it well. Just spreads the unknown entity. The bomb's going eight for safekeeping, and Nork tucking into B will be duking it out with Down. Yet to frag, but given the responsibility of locking them here into B, and hasn't quite managed to do so. He's only got two bullets left, and now on the reload, could get pushed. Nade. Bang. Oh. And the dirt <laughs> is gone. That's sort of one two punch there is. Nork, watch your health. Cadian's taking it from him. There is an AWP on short, though. That's a, a good find. Not going to be easy to retrieve. Might opt for the apartment's rifle instead. Better than nothing. And Eco's already locked down that AWP on short. All right. Well, they'd be happy to carry across a rifle at least. As long as Rez doesn't get any more inquisitive or Burrow doesn't go for it. Wall bang. Wall bang. And they're just picking up the pieces here, deciding what they want to p take through to the next round. It will be the AWP. Bomb goes off, and now we've hit the double digits. The buy is not going to be ideal for NIP, but that saved AK might go a long way. So we have to wait and see what they're able to drop across and what, what type of weaponry Hampus wants to go with here because we did just see that Hero M4. It looks like Heroic are taking another tactical timeout, and I like this because it felt like a lot of the rounds in the first half were getting away from them. They didn't identify that gap towards B early enough, or maybe they were too stubborn to do so. But that was a reason that they were having to battle back here, and well, all in all, there's no reason Heroic aren't able to get into this game. We've seen them have every style of Counter-Strike up against them in recent months. They've been playing so much CS since the return from the player break. Yeah, I mean, Kadian was talking about, you know, the extra games they're playing, that they're winning a trophy one day and then trying to qualify for a tournament the next. I finished DreamHack Open uh, against Vitality, which was the best of five that I believe went the full distance at about 1 a.m. And then the next day, they had a qualifier at 11.30 a.m. And they talk about normally being present three to four hours before a match. They still got up two hours before their game to prep for it. So dedication from the heroic youngsters here, but you need it within this era. Lots of Counter-Strike. And if you consistently can show that you are the best and coming out on top in tournaments, yeah, I mean, finding consistency online is, is a mystery that's eluded well, some of the, like an oxymoron, doesn't the it? best of them, yeah. Hampus looking for more. Tested here on the A site. Borup taking him down without too much sweat on his brow. Three flooding into the site. Stown exploits the gap already. Two frags to the good. Heroic making a game out of this mirage in the late stages of the T side. A nice molly will put Popsky out of the sight and out of mind. Another Molotov, once again, forcing and delaying this retake. They do have a kit. It's only one as well. They're backing saving. away for the save. Yeah, Twist will park himself in CT. Thought they might hang around for a little bit more there, but those Molotovs towards top stairs and connected for a two hot for Plopsky. He's already backed on out towards B-Apps, and it's just this man tucked in towards T-Spawn of Twist to try and do some more financial damage here. Barup's going to think better of giving away an AK, or is he? They don't know if they want to chase or not. Kadian's actually pushing through Spawn as uh -oh. well. If they take away the AWP... Oh, the jiggle. Great stuff from Bar up. A weapon taken out of the hands of NIP is 11 now on the board. The Danes, they're resurging here late. No tears just yet, other than from me. But 
What started with six consecutive defensive rounds has now been responded to by four from Heroic on the trot. They've been hitting A and it's been working lovely. Starting to see the competitive half take shape and starting to see the seeds of doubt planted in the minds of NIP. I will remind you though that should Nork or Hampus just fill, up, fill the feed with one of their signature multi-kills, this could already be 15 blink of an eye. Heroic have to hold on here. And they've got themselves the saved weapon. Yeah, watch out for this open, Nork hands. Ooh. Okay, he's tagged one, Cadian. Bullet lodged in his thigh for the rest of this round. He's working with just 12 HP. And we've seen how well he can evade damage in the past with his low HP and still provide. It's important that he survives. He's part an integral component of this finish. Oh, I like this. It, it feels like they're setting up for a B execute. So once you've identified that the AWP is over towards B, if you set up with a set piece, let's talk about the smokes towards the pillars, maybe towards kitchen window. Uh, as long as they flash Nork off of this line, they should be able to execute cleanly onto the site. So the decision seems silly, but it's not rushed. It's, it's thought through, and they're lining up these smokes now. So, smoke's on over. Nork. Have to flash him off, though. They didn't, and he gets the first. Little premature from Nico. One slip the net. It's down, jumping out the window. Now Nork is under threat, and he will be found. Down. Entry fragger. Extraordinaire. And Tessus actually making a huge contribution by swinging up top mid late. Just as the bomb gets planted on B, it makes sure a very unviable option. Plopsky loses his head. Borup getting all the frags necessary and Heroic are on for another. This will be five in a row. They've practically leveled the playing field here. It's a nine, six, half. Heroic making a little late resurgence. Tessus will check it. Hampus too good, double bullet into the chest. Takes down Tessus and they will save safely towards Kitchen. I could see Cadian's brain immediately go over what that approach was just by him pulling out the smoke on those stairs, yeah. right? Because they identified the AWP was there very, very early. And if they had gone into a stack, like what Heroic had done to NIP in that first half, then yeah, you would have been kicking yourself. You would have been very frustrated, but you're playing the, with the information you have. And the information they had was the AWP was on B. So you could see they smoked Kitchen. They didn't actually smoke off towards the pillars in the same way that I had imagined. But regardless, the end goal was the same. And they've been able to force NIP to take their second tactical timeout here of the first map. Lots of things to talk through right now because the game that was looking close is quickly getting out of their control. Two more now for Heroic to tie things up. Got to hold on here. Everybody listening, quite pensive music as we have an eyeball of threat on the screen. I'm sure his mouth is moving. I'm very sure it is. Hiding from the camera, doesn't want to show what he's saying. There's a lot of lip readers on the uh, Heroic side. Especially in uh, Swedish as well. So. Yeah, well, <laughs> an extra, extra curveball. Now we've got two scoped rifles for the uh, CT 27th round. We'll be seeing an org for Plopski. Um, he's been relatively absent, relatively slow starting, other than that incredible round on B where he got himself, I think it was four kills total. How is it 27 for Nork and 27 for Hampus? That is wild. Yeah, man, they just keep consistently delivering these round winning doubles and then you just sit there and say save it's easy to forget how you got there Come what on. on earth rez has kept his crosshair so still like a statue it's a laser beam catches the yeah the laser beam timing onto tessus's swing up mid through the smoke and now speaking of smoke it locks rez out of mid can't contest nade doesn't do too much and boosting into the window is down the smoke's still there and this is a duel that you'd imagine favors the t using that light as we've observed but it's a little late to be holding that cross down's already there does rez operate under the assumption he is he's cautious tentative oh he's been spotted now ouch what a shot down. what a video game player got it get out if they retool back to b now heroic it's the right call you can see on the minimap top left hand of your screen that it is three players from nip rooted heavily in towards the a bomb site and just one man twist Again, a smoke towards B. That's all he has to defend with. And the rotation's coming through. 45 seconds on the clock. Bomb over towards Vent Room. Connected control for Bow up. And over towards B Apartments is Stown and Nico now. NIP have smelt this. They've gotten wind and they're rotating over. Katie can still be flexible between yeah, those Yeah, I was just thinking that. That bomb can choose. And Borup's walking into A, thinking it looks a little too clear. Cadian's pivoting into A as well. But Hampus, as always, has a plan. Right. Plopsky completely caught out. Nork, what a duel that is to take. But the bomb goes down, and now Hampus should have a double. 
does reveal himself. Nico was on that Tetris position. Now he's got to deal with the Palace for the retake. Two coming from short. Timing is everything because his teammates are so far away. It's down, keeping them busy on short. Twist has to make a sound cue to break that. Practically a guarantee now for Heroic. There just isn't enough time for them to cover that ground. So they are just going to save it despite Hampus being the rat in the system. How insane is that that Cadian, with the orb and the bomb, just sits in vent room, allows his teammates to go around, find information, and whichever bomb site's clear, he just heads to. Yeah. There's so much confidence as well. Yeah. I mean, like, the, the way that worked, it, it was practically perfect because it fit, you know how if you can feel like there's too many players on the enemy team? You're like, what's going on? If yeah. That's exactly the kind of round that feels like that. They're executing B. They were also walking up A. Rez opened them up with a lovely dub, uh, well, catch through the smoke, and... It puts us on now at 13 to 14. I thought we'd already put the uh, the end into the Mirage game, but NIP, despite finding the six opening rounds of this half, have just been responded to with exactly the same right back. We are still practically inseparable. Ooh. Now the momentum lies with the Danes. Double ops here for the defense. Grenade does good damage down, cut down to 50. And they're charging through middle. There is very little CT resistance. Where do you want to go with this? If they pounce, this could be the answer. A little bit quicker with the it's pace fast. now. It is fast. They flash the jungle hold. No one's there. They swing in. Have window control. Rez goes one for one. It will all be on Twist and Nork. Both on CT. Both now low. Nork's back and away playing for the retake. He is actually healthy. It's Twist who's taken the majority of the flak and he's finished off nicely. Nico's hard work converted by Borup. One more Heroic. flash. Yeah, they have got one. And Nork's managed to find him a way in. Flash from the T's now. Borup will swing on it. No, he's kept safe by Plopski. Maybe the ninjas can do this. They got Util. They got Kits. Stown and Nico given the task. Oh! Yes. And now the frag. Stown found, finds it. It's all on to Stown. And now he's got to stand his ground. Plopski gets it. Another double kill, multi kill. This time the Swedes have taken a successful retake of that A site. And a six round drought. Finding it in the seventh. NIP break their silence with a 15th. There were just pixels between some of these kills here. The flash work was really good from Heroic to continue to harass towards CT spawn, but unable to convert onto Nork there. And that, that's the undoing for Heroic is, yeah, they've really struggled to get the tie here at 14-14. It's NIP pulling away in the final moments. They have 15, they have secured overtime here today in map number one. And if you're Heroic, Probably not going to be too dissuaded after losing just the one. You know what worked? Yeah, I think some of the problems they have, though, is they get min loss bonus, right? So it was only the 1400 coming through at this stage. Yeah, they got most of the goodies. Hayden has 8K, so you're right. They have a lot of cash. Is he going to buy into an all? Surely he's not going to play the last <sighs> round with just the Tech well, 9. One would assume. It's 8.6K. Maybe it's on the floor. What? Cadian? All right. Whatever. Away we go. Fast B. Smokes, to, fast. smokes over and away they go. This is going to be quick ending. Yeah, it could very well be the test. Plopsky's nade might be perfect and jumping out. Oh. Look at the damage. Heroic. They need this round for survival on Mirage and Twister's already taken down Nico. He's even got a second. The AWP works. Testus loses a lot of health, but he gets the double. Just an equalizing spray out of nowhere. Stown could get dunked. He's low. The trajectory of the nade, the res postured, would dunk him. He hasn't thrown it out and found him. So instead, we have got a 3v3 and now an after plant. Hampus coming in from short. He's been spotted, but does take down Testus. NIP, two frags away from converting their map pick. Stown so low. He's going to get swung on. Cadian's already gone down. Oh, dear. Stown, you need to be a hero. And Nork's got the no-scope. NIP eventually pulling their map pick across the line. So damn hard. Warg required, though. Woo! Ninjas in pajamas, 1-0 up in the series. We're heading into Heroic's Tough next.